Hello, Matteo. Hello. Hello. Yes, I'm here. I I saw that we had another participant, but it left. Yes. Yes. Maybe he has a connection issue. Let's see if it. Okay. No, we're we are here, the three of us. Okay. Uh, I think we can start. Okay, let me just put that in the chat so that uh, John uh, will know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So today. Uh, we are going through, we'll be going through the uh, ggplot2 book, uh, which is about uh, the grammar of data visualization in R. Uh, so today we'll be looking at uh, chapter six uh, of the book, uh, which is about, uh, which is about uh, maps. So uh, for, for, for the learning objective uh, for this chapter, we are going to see how uh, we are going to plot a simple uh, map using uh, the geom polygon function from ggplot2. Uh, we, then we are going to use uh, the simple futures, uh, which is the SF. We are going to see how uh, we are going to uh, work with the SF object because the SF object, uh, they, they are very much uh, compatible uh, with uh, ggplot2. So we are going to see how we are going to integrate both the geom SF, and also the uh, code SF, which has to do with the coordinate uh, uh, reference uh, system. Then we are also going to see how we can draw maps uh, uh, using the the raster using the raster data. So, but basically in this uh, notes, uh, they say that uh, plotting geospatial data is a common visualization task, uh, and the, the process may require uh, specialized tools. We, we can decompose the problem into two parts using one data source to draw a map. Then we have to add some metadata from another information source to the map. So uh, basically uh, when we are, we want, we have a special problem in which we want to visualize this problem uh, using the map. First, we need to supply the coordinates we need to have at uh, the coordinates and in r in ggplot2 the sf objects are uh, there is a specialized way in which uh, the data need to look like we need to have the longitude we need to have uh, the latitude uh, i think in some we can also have some uh, specialized other information then we are going to plot uh, all those information visualize it uh, in the map using a map so that is basically uh what uh this chapter this chapter is about so for the first part uh we are going to see how we are going to use uh the polygon maps so using this uh geom uh polygon function uh that is from ggplot2 so we are going to draw uh a map in which we can have uh several uh, polygons embedded with that uh, within the map. So first we are look using the library uh, ggplot2 to initialize. So we are getting our data from this map data 
So we use the map underscore data. So here we specify we need all the county and all the uh, Michigan's, uh, Michigan's uh, states. So, and then we field, we select uh, longitude, we select all the latitude, we, we get the groups, and we also get uh, the subregion, in which in this case we are renaming it to be ID, while for the longitude, we are doing, rena we rename it uh, to be long. So when we look at the head of Michigan counties, we can see that we have uh, longitude, we have the latitude, we have uh, the group, and also the ID. So in this data set, we have uh, four variables. So we can just, as I said, latitude, longitude, and, and we have also the ID, which is the name of the region. We also have the group, which is unique identifier uh, for contiguous area within a region. So, so the ID uh, like this shows, this is Alcona, uh, this is also Alcona, this is also Alcona, this is also Alcona, this is Alcona. So we have different ID, uh, which is a unique identifier. So when we visualize this, uh, when we visualize this uh, within ggplot2, uh, we just pass in the data sets in which we want to use uh, for, uh, for visualization. Then within the aesthetics, we specify that we map the longitude uh, to the x-axis, uh, we map the latitude uh, to the y-axis. Then we add a new layer, which is point, which is going to plot uh, the points. Then the size of the points, we say it should be 0.25. Then we turn off uh, the legend because since uh, we do not want to see the legend. So that is why we are using shoulder legend uh, equals to false because we don't want, we are not interested in the legend. So we are using this function, which is called quick map. So this called quick map is going to ensure that both uh, the latitude and the longitude, they are going to be plotted uh, in the same, uh, using the same scale. So once we do that, we are going to have this map, which shows all the points, all the points. But in this case, we might be interested in uh, showing uh, the different uh, the different uh, polygons within this uh, Michigan state. So how do we achieve that? We are going to switch rather than we using geom uh, points, we are going to use geom polygon. So in that case, we say fill because to white, so we don't want to fill those polygons. So we have color, which is gray 50. So it means that the border, all the, the exterior border of those polygon is going to be colored by gray 50. So we can see that we have in uh, the same map. This, this is the same map for this. For this, uh, we were using uh, geom points so to show those data sets. But if you want to visualize uh, each of this uh, country, we want to see each polygon. So in that case, uh, we switch to geom polygon. We can see that we are having uh, multiple polygon within the, those map. So let's see this. Uh, let's see this in practice. Let's see this so we can I can copy this so that we see how it works in ggplot2. Uh -huh. So let's see this. Sorry library in shorts let me remove tidy verse okay so when i check this we can see we have longitude we have latitude we have group we have id so when i come here i grab this okay So when we do this uh, called quick maps, we can see that we have this. So if we are not really sure what God, God quick map is doing, we can just check for the documentation. We can see God, uh, God map, God map. 
project a portion of the air which is applied spherical. So this makes sure that the both x and y axis they are projected in the same coordinate. You can see that both code map and code quick map are superseded. We are moving toward code SF, which is from the SF object simple future and should no longer be used in new code. All regular non-SF can be used with code SF. So which is uh, the modern way of doing this is for us to use the code SF. But before we use that, we need to ensure that our spatial objects in which we are using, we want to use uh, to create our visualization, we have converted it uh, to a simple future object so that we, we can easily uh, use it uh, when we want to plot uh, with ggplot2. So this other one, this the last one where we show all we show all the polygons. Sorry, I'm sharing a different. So we have this. Okay, so this shows that we're having uh, multiple uh, polygons. Uh, okay, I don't know if there are any questions uh, up till now. Please feel free to interrupt me in case uh, there is any question. Matthew and Olukunle, I don't know if there are any questions. You can continue. Okay. So I, th I think I've explained about this, that a code quick map is used to adjust the axis to ensure longitude and latitude are rendered on the same scale. Then they said for more advanced use of ggplot2 mapping, so we can use uh, the GeomSF and the code SF uh, from the simple future uh, formats, which is what we will see uh, next on how to deal with this. So. I think for this, I'll uh, we'll just switch uh, back to the book that we are working on. I think we are in simple future now. We are in simple future, I'll go back to maps. Uh, we have seen John Polygon on how we can visualize, we have seen this. So uh, here we are going to simple futures, simple future, which is a F SF object. Uh, this is the modern way uh, to visualize uh, spatial data uh, uh, using ggplot2 because the SF package, uh, they're, very, they're very much integrated uh, into ggplot2. So here we are using, the data set we are using is from this package, which is OZ maps. Then we are initializing library SF to load the simple future. Uh, once we load this simple future, uh, we are going to have Joom SF. We can plot th that simple future using the Joom SF uh, function that is in ggplot2 or code SF. So here we are getting the data set and we store the data set as OZ state. So when we call OZ state, it shows that it's a simple future collection with nine futures and one field. Okay. And for the geometry column, it shows it's a multiple multi polygon so it means that within that geometric column we have several other polygons so we can see that this is a multi polygon in the geometry column we can see it's multi polygon this is a coordinate longitude and latitude this is longitude and latitude this is longitude and latitude so that is why they call it a uh, multi polygon so we, are, we also see the bounding box, which is like the square, which is the X minimum, which is 106, Y minimum, X maximum, Y maximum, and the geodetic, which is a coordinate reference system, is GDAL G, uh, 94, but we can uh, reproject this coordinate system into a desirable coordinate reference system in which uh, we, we, we might specify that we want our map to be projected uh, using uh, this uh, coordinate reference system. So and ggplot2 is very smart. It's going to do all the computation. It's going to plot it, and it's going to render it uh, using that uh, specific uh, coordinate reference system. So this is how we can plot it. We just pass in our uh, SF object, which is OZ states within the ggplot2 function. So we add a new layer where we say we have, we want to use SF, which is 
geometry, simple future geometry plus coordinate SF, which is going to ensure that we are rendering it uh, using a standard uh, coordinate reference system. So we are going to have uh, this map in this case. So, but we can also have, uh, we can also have multiple, uh, multiple geometry uh, in which we, we can keep on adding Geom SF, Geom SF, passing in different layers. And that is how we are going to uh, plot it. I think there is an example, yes, which is layered uh, maps. So here, here we can have OZ map, OZ state, and then we filter all the name that is not equals to other territories. Then we also have uh, another data set, which is OZ votes which is coming from the RMAP shopper. We use MFs Simplify to simplify it so that it can be easily uh, plotted uh, using ggplot2. So we, we pass in that data set. And it shows that the legacy package, map tools, RGDAL, and RGOS underpinning this will retire shortly. So, uh, uh -huh. They are going to retire this uh, shortly. So once we want to visualize this, uh, we have ggplot2, okay? We add a layer, which is geomsf. Here we say data is OZ states, and then we say mapping aesthetics. So we fill by all the name. Then we say show dot legend should be equals to false. So when we use a show dot legend equals to false, it means that we don't, we don't want to uh, display uh, the legend uh, on the plot. So in that case, they also add a new layer because here they're having two layers for GeomSF. Within the second layer, GeomSF, they pass in a new data set, which is OZ votes. Then they say field should be equals to N because they don't want to fill uh, the, the OZ votes by any value. So they just say N. Then they use code SF to render it in the in the same the coordinate reference system. So when we use code SF, uh, we are going to have uh, this uh, this uh, this map. So, but but there are some instances uh, once uh, we have rendered the map, we need uh, to really annotate this map uh, with text so that our 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 viewer people that are going through the map it will be easy. Uh, for them to understand the message uh, we are trying to convey. So ggplot2, there is a two new function, which is geomsf label to add label of text on the plot on the map. We also have geomsf text. This is going to add text on the map. So in this case, so how do we go about this? We use the OZ map. So we filter all the name that are not, that is equals to either of this name, we filter to get this information, and we are assigning it this into an object called a uh, Sydney map. So here we use ggplot2. Uh, within ggplot2, we pass in the data sets. So we are adding a new layer. Here we say jump underscore sf. Then we say aesthetics. We say field is equals to name. So we want to fill uh, that map by the name. We can see we have filled them up. By, by all the name. In that case, we remove the legend. So we add a new layer, which is called SF. Within course SF, we specify the limit for the X axis. We also specify uh, the limit uh, for the Y axis. So for us to now add this label in which we have seen on the map, we use the Joom SF label. The GeomSF label is different from Geom label in ggplot2 because the GeomSF uh, label we use it to add label uh, into our S, into our map. So we, here we specify the uh, the aesthetics. So we say label is equals to name. So which is uh, all the name? Then we do some padding. Say label dot padding, which will be units of one uh, millimeter. We want to pad it one millimeter. Uh, so once we do once we do that, we can see that we have placed successfully uh, placed our label 
on the map. So the people that are, they, it can, they can easily see that here we have Paramata, we have Benelong, we have Waringa, we have North Sydney, and it will be very easy uh, for our viewer uh, to go through this map and they will really uh, uh, decode the message uh, in which we want to convey uh, to them. So we can also add additional points on this same map. So how do we do that? Here yeah, we have a, 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 a data frame, okay? We have a data frame, which is a table, which we name OZ Capital. So we want to plot all this uh, capital uh, on that map as a point. So we still do the same step. We initialize the ggplot2 and then we say geomsf data is OZ votes plus another geomsf data is OZ states color should be black, fill should be NA plus geom points. Data is OZ capital, which is going to plot all the capital as a point on that map. So if we check this, we can see that we have our polygons, okay? We have our polygon, but we have plot a point. We can see all those points because John Point is going to plot uh, those points uh, for us on the map. And this is very useful. Maybe we have done a survey. Uh, we have some coordinates. We want to plot those coordinates on our map. So we just need to get the polygon. So once we fetch uh, those polygon, we create a table or a data frame. Those data frame might contain the location alongside with the longitude and latitude. Then we can now plot that data frame. We can add that layer of points on the map to show the points of where we did our uh, sampling, which is very, uh, very useful. I don't know. Uh, if there are any question up to this point uh, so that I can address it before going further. Okay, so I guess uh, there is no uh, question, so I will just uh, proceed. Okay, it's like somebody want to speak. No, we are, we are good. Okay. Yes, I think we're good. So I think this other part is about uh, map projection. I think uh, if going through the Joe computation book uh, with R, uh, when it comes to projection, so I think there is uh, always different thoughts, different view. It's, also, it's a, a very uh, wide uh, topic for us to map uh, projection, but this mainly how to do how we want uh, to render our map. How do we, do we want to render our map? So there are different approach. So this, some people might choose to say, oh, I want my map uh, to be projected just like we here. Uh, in Africa, we always prefer to use the WGS84, which is the World Geodetic System 84. But in some other school of thought, maybe they can say, oh, I prefer uh, my map uh, to be projected using this uh, coordinate reference uh, system. So, but uh, in the book, I think they also uh, make reference here to this very useful book, which is uh, the Joe computation book uh, with R. Though I think I was, we just finished uh, that uh, cohort this uh, week. We just finished reading the entire book on the Joe computation uh, with R. So for us to do that, we can use this function, which is STCRS. We pass in our SF object. So once we pass in our SF object, it's going to tell us the coordinate reference system of that SF object in which we pass in. We can see this, that this is a coordinate reference system. This one was using EPSG4283, which is, uh, which is what uh, uh, this, this our OZ votes that is a coordinate reference system. So we can uh, uh, we can uh, look uh, for we can just let's see one example. Let's see one example. Uh, let's go back to R. So we say 
library sf so library uh, natural that's okay you can say any underscore countries come to any underscore states let me use any underscore states country nigeria return class i need it to be sf so here it should be nigeria okay so if you check that environment we have nigeria there so we can say STCRS, we pass in Nigeria. We can see, can see that we are using coordinate reference system, user inputs, approach, we are there. So this is WGS84, just as I said, this is how the standard format for year, it's 1984, so we can check for ST CRS. I pass in MI counties, which is in my global environment. So we can see the, this one, the coordinate reference system, it did not detect it. So it's NA. So that is a very useful uh, function in which we can just use uh, to explore. So I have a spatial object. I do not know what is the coordinate reference system of this spatial object. Uh, if I'm not sure, I can use STCRS. So STCRS, I just pass in uh, that spatial object uh, into that function. So that it's going to detect, uh, it's going to tell me uh, the coordinate reference system of that spatial object. Then I can reproject that coordinate reference system of my own choice. So, so in this case, they say STCRS, they pass in the OZ votes. So yeah, they want this ST, they want the coordinate reference system to be 4283. So we can see that it's always, it returns true that that coordinate reference system is taken. So in this case, we pass in our objects, we use John SF, which is going to give us uh, this particular object. So we also have a second example. They are using the same data, John SF, Called SF, CRS, STCRS, they set it to be 3112. We can now see that there is a difference between these two map. This one is projected, it's using a different coordinate reference system, which is 3112. This one is using another coordinate reference system. So the coordinate reference system is very, very important uh, when we are doing we are visualizing our spatial objects in R because it's going to show how this map is rendered, how this map is going to be rendered, depends on the coordinate reference system in which we are choose, we choose uh, to use. Because going through, reading through the coordinate reference system from that Joe computation with our book in which I posted on the chat, you will see that uh, coordinate reference system is a very push topic. There is a whoosh lot of debates between different, because each person has his own view that this it should be like this, this other view, opposing view say, no, we prefer it to be. So it's a very hot topic. So uh, it's, it's better with, take time to do uh, uh, a little bit uh, of our research to know uh, the best way to present our special objects. But for me, I always prefer using, I am always used to the WGS84, which is always our own standard here. So, but working with SF data, simple future data. So how do we work with this data? We make sure we are going to plot it with either we're using Joom SF uh, or, or the code SF. I think uh, this is a repository uh, for this SF object. So for that is a SF object, which stands for the uh, simple future. So here, 
we have OZ maps. We got we grab these data sets, okay, and then we filter for name that is equals to Eden Monaro. So then we save it in this new object. So we want to plot that. Yeah, we are using Jom SF. So when we use Jom SF, we can see that we are having two polygons, but there is a, a hole here. Okay. But when we use this, when we use this P plus cod SF, we specify the X limit, we specify the Y limit. Okay. We also have the second one here. We specify also the X limit and also uh, the Y limit. So once we render that, we can see that here we are having a hole. Okay. But here, based on the zoom level in which we specify, because here we say we need 150, and this is 150. We need the maximum for X to be 150.25, uh, which is around 150.25, which is around here. Then for the Y, we have minus 36.3, which is going to be around here. And uh, we also have minus 36, uh, which is which is uh, around here. So it's going to render uh, that map in that, and uh, we can see that we're having a O here. And what they put a note that as this illustrates, Eden Monaro is defined in terms of two distinct polygons, a large one on the Australian mainland and a small Iceland. However, the large region has a hole in the middle. They say the the whole exists because the Australian capital territory is a distinct political unit. So the Australian capital is a distinct political unit. So they just show that uh, as a whole. So, but in this case, we might choose to pull out all the polygon that are here. So we save it in this object. Uh, we can get the bounding box, which is like the X limits, the Y limits, X maximum, Y maximum, and that can be retrieved using the STBB B box. So we pass in the object. So it's going to give us uh, the, the bounding box. So we can also, they also call the object. We can see that this object uh, is a multi polygon, it's a multi polygon, but we can cast this, decompose this multiple multi-polygon into the distinct polygon using this st underscore cast function. So we can check the documentation. What is the function doing? We have st underscore cast. So st cast, cast geometry to another type, either simplify or cast explicitly. So what is the function doing? So we have st cast, we pass in the objects. You say we want to cast all the polygon. We can see it's now is our way to have multi polygon. We are that we are having a individual polygon rather than multi polygon. So and um, we can have our data. We filter for all the name that is Dawson, and then we pull out all the geometry. We retrieve all the geometry. We call the Dawson. We can see we have multi polygon. This is a multi polygon. So we can visualize this using Joom SF, which is from the ggplot2 package. We can see that we have our map, which is ggplot2. We pass in the data. We said Joom uh, SF, then we say cod SF. So, which will now render uh, the map. So, in this case, we can cast this dozen, all the polygon. We save it as Dawson. So we can now say which dot max. So which dot max ST area, we want to compute the area, entire area of this polygon. We can see we have 69, uh, 69 polygons. So, but now in ggplot, we want to visualize this. We are removing the 69 polygon. We had uh, Joom SF and also called SF. So once we visualize that, uh, we are going to have this object, which is an SF, which is a spatial map. Uh, 
So for, for the last uh, part, before we look at the data, uh, they talk about uh, the raster maps. Uh, but for the raster maps, uh, they were using the GDAR read to read in this data. Uh, but for the more updated version, uh, using uh, working with raster, I think uh, from going through the geo computation, I think I, I, I will highly recommend uh, we look at Terra, which is a very powerful tool in which we can use uh, to work with the raster file. We can use it to import the raster file. Uh, we do several pre-processing steps uh, before we now visualize uh, that raster object uh, using uh, ggplot2. So, but for the, I tried running this example. Uh, it is, I could not uh, reproduce this at my own environment because I could not locate this stiff object in which uh, they were using to plot with the stars package. So they just load library stars, sat this, so they read in, uh, they read in these objects. Then the raster IO, which is a list, they specify this to be 600. This other one uh, to be 600. So when they say start this, we can see that it's a stars object with three dimensional and one attribute summary file. We can now see uh, some other useful information in which we can use uh, for our plotting. So, so how do we go about that? We have ggplot plus jump stars. This jump stars is a new layer that is coming uh, from the stars package. So in this case, we say data is cost to start, start this plus cut equals. So when we use that, it just is going to uh, visualize uh, these stars for us. But I could not uh, reproduce this because I could not locate uh, the path to this uh, IDO 00422.dst file. So I could not get it. So I could not reproduce uh, this in my own. And so in this other part, this is still, they are still using jump stars. Uh, they turn off the legends. So they say facet wrap pass should be banned. So this is band one, two, and also three. Then code equal, then scale field gradient. So low should be black. Anywhere we have low should be black. Anywhere we have high should be white. So it's going to give us uh, this object which is uh, the same thing uh, they did here, but the, what really diff what it differs is that they add a layer for GeomSF where they pass in the other states, then the field NA color should be white. So once they do that, they have added a new uh, layer here to show us where these states are. This is the stars object. Then they say scale field gradient. So uh, ggplot2, uh, it really plays an uh, important role because we can keep on adding different layers upon layers. So that is how uh, we build uh, our visualization, our map from ground up. We can have maybe four or five different layers of GeomSF. Within those GeomSF, we are passing in different, uh, different uh, uh, data sets. So, and it plays uh, a nice role. So here they were having cities, which is OZ capitals, and then ST as SF. So they convert this to an SF object. So we need to specify the coordinates. This is longitude, this is latitude. The coordinate reference system should be 4326, remove should be four. So we need everything to remain at it is. So, so what? Next, they now yeah, they, they transform the coordinate reference system of the cities to that of STCRS of start this. We need start this uh, to have a unique coordinate reference system. So they now uh, they now visualize this uh, using both GEOM stars for the raster and also GEOM SF for our SF objects. So in this case, they are passing in two different SF objects. So they ensure that we are running it in a, that the coordinate reference system is the same. So we can see that these are the points. These are the points. This is the uh, data cities and color 
red. So this shows because in this case, we are having multi points. So this is a point, this is a point, this is a point, this is a point. So it's just going to add this uh, to the map. So here they were mainly in, to wrap it up, uh, they were talking about uh, different data sources in which we can really play with when we are working with the spatial objects. So they have the USA boundaries package, which contains states, county, and zip code data for US for the US, as well as current boundaries. It also has states and county boundaries going black back to the uh, one 1600s. We also have the Tigris package. Uh, they said this makes it easy to assess the US census Tigris shapefile. It contains states, country, zip code, and census track boundaries. Uh, we also have the All Natural Earth package. I think I have used this today. Uh, this is a very useful package. It bundles up the free high quality data from, from the from the rnaturalheaddata.com. It contains country borders and borders for the top level region within each uh, country. We also have the OSMAR package, which is a very good package. Also, if you have your own shape file, you can load them into R with SF read underscore SF. So SF read underscore SF, we can use it to read in uh, our own shape file into R. And once we read in uh, that shape file into R, we can plot uh, those shape file uh, using the Joom SF uh, function from uh, ggplot2. I think uh, that is uh, basically uh, what uh, this uh, chapter talks about. I don't know, I think I'm open so I can entertain question. We can also further discuss on this chapter further. Hello, Matthew and Olukunle. Yes. Thank you for the presentation, Femi. I don't think I have any questions on this topic. I don't know if let's see here. Olukunle maybe has any questions. Actually, I'm good. Uh, I just have to go and sit down and look at the codes and reproduce. Well done. Okay, so I will just post stop on the charts.